Hello everybody, this is John Mono with John Mono Weddings and we're doing another Facebook Live today. We have an exciting Facebook Live all about helping you choose your photographer. And it is March and people are scrambling <laughs> to find their wedding photographers because their wedding is in four months and they're going, oh, what do I do? Uh, so uh, suggestions are booking a year in advance is a good idea. Um, so you don't have to stress out so much. But um, getting back to our topic, I did a live stream last week about choosing a wedding venue. So when you're going to have a wedding, the first thing you want to do is choose your venue because you can't hire a photographer if you're not sure when the wedding date is because they may be booked. So step number one is to find your venue. And then step number two, most important, is to find your photographer. Your photographer is one of the most important vendors, I would say the most important vendor in your whole wedding process that you're going to work with because what they create for you in the form of your images are lasting for the rest of your life. So they're the last, the, 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 the thing that you can hold on to the most after your wedding to preserve your memories. So once again, the first thing is your venue and then your wedding photographer. Now, I participate in some Facebook groups and this uh, I saw a little discussion come up in a Facebook group that I thought was real interesting. And so I wanted to build today's Facebook Live around this particular thing. So introducing myself, my name is John Mono. I am the owner and the photographer for John Mono Weddings. And I'm based out of Southbury, Connecticut. I do beautiful wedding photography for people and I'm really big about educating brides and couples to help them understand what's happening, um, what, who to choose, uh, because it is very um, just overwhelming, you know, for so many of these brides and couples, especially those planning their own wedding, it's overwhelming to sort through the whole details. So that's why I'm doing these videos. So getting back to this discussion, uh, one, of, uh, one of the brides says, okay, I'm asking for some advice here. She puts it out to the group. I won't mention any names, but just give a general feeling. And she says, I found this photographer that I love. And this was in caps, L-O-V-E. I love her in big caps. And she's offering me 10 hours for our wedding, plus an engagement or boudoir session, all for $1,500. And then she says, but someone else approached me and says that they're willing to do my wedding for $600 because they want to gain experience. Um, they've only done one wedding before, but they want to build their portfolio and gain experience. And uh, the question she puts out to this group is she says, I'm torn do I pay the extra money um, for the original photographer that she loves, who's very reputable, or do I give this girl a chance at $600 and saves the money? And I was really uh, happy to see that many people responded, both brides responded saying, you know, we went cheaper on our wedding and we had a terrible experience all the way to other photographers that had gotten on the, uh, the, the thread. There was actually 48 comments and every single one of them said, go for the $1,500 experience photographer. And I'm going to, I added some comments on there myself. I'm one of the 48 commenters um, in there and it, you know, it opened up this whole thread of, of discussion for people so the thing is with photography when a bride is say looking or couples looking for a photographer they think okay here's <laughs> photographer photographer a okay is an apple they're a photographer right okay and they go okay well here's <laughs> photographer B they're an apple too so this one's charging me $1,500 and this one's charging me $600. Hmm. <laughs> They're both apples, right? So they both must taste like apples and, and uh, be good. But when you're talking about photography, you're photographers in general, you're not talking about comparing an apple to an apple. I was going to use a pear for this example. Here's a pear. But I started thinking, they're two alike, and that doesn't even do it. So I finally settled on a box of cereal. <laughs> okay. Real here, it goes cereal. So comparing one photographer to another is like comparing an apple to a box of cereal. 
And the point is, it's kind of a funny discussion here, analogy, but they're totally different. There's no comparison between an apple and a box of cereal. And that is the same with one photographer to another. A photographer is not a photographer is not a photographer. They're all different. And it makes a huge difference who you hire. I can't stress that enough. Who you hire is huge. So example, you know, if you're buying a car and you decide on the car you want, let's say you want a Honda Civic and you go to the Honda dealer in Danbury and he goes, cool, here's a Honda Civic. And then you go to the dealer in Waterbury and he goes, here, cool, here's a Honda Civic. They're both Honda Civics. But with photography, it's totally different. Number one, you're dealing with a service. And the thing is, you're like if you're an electrician, you're dealing with a service too, right? But Joe got a license in elect, you know, being an electrician. And Bob got a license too. So they both pass the tests and they both follow codes. And so you're both gonna, you know, get good work. But with photography, there's there's no standard, you know, there's there's no standard of skill, there's no standard of um, <clears throat> equipment, there's no standards to separate one photographer for another. So that's what makes it really hard. I mean, a lot of photographers just pick up a camera and go, I want to be a photographer. Cool. You know, let's watch some YouTube videos. And and I'm not knocking that because there's a lot of excellent photographers out there that, you know, didn't just just picked it up and they have a gift and, and, and a knack and and all that. Um, but getting back to that point that there is there's no standards to show one from another. So how do you know as a couple, as a bride, you know, as someone trying to find a photographer, how do you choose? Do we choose the apple or the box of cereal? And in this particular um, video here, the analogy was having an experienced photographer versus a new photographer, someone just breaking into the industry. And a lot of times I see people say, well, we're just going to have a friend shoot the wedding because he's a photographer. He's got a camera. <laughs> okay. He's a, so therefore, he's a photographer. He's got a camera. Okay. <laughs> but this class here or this video is going to show the differences, especially between experienced people and less experienced people. Okay. So here we go. Hang on. Here we go. So the first thing is equipment. Okay. Now, when you're starting off in the photography business, you know, most people don't go to the bank and get a loan for, you know, $400,000 and buy all the best equipment in the, in the land so they can start off with all the best gear. So usually people start off with a, a camera they got for Christmas or, you know, an introductory level they got at Costco or something like that. And that's what they start off with. So as an example here, I'm all into examples today. So this is camera A, okay, which it's a Nikon camera. Okay. It's cool. It's a, you know, D7000. It's got some numbers on it. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> It's got a souped up engine in it. No, here we go. Okay. So this is camera A. And this is what, let's say, a new photographer would start off with. Somebody new in the industry or even a friend, if a friend is a photographer. So this camera here, if I went to buy it in the store, would say cost $500. Okay. That's a lot of money. That's an intro camera. Now, let's get... Ooh, this one's heavy. Okay. <laughs> Okay, there's a big difference. This one's heavy. This one's light. That should tell you something. All right, so now we have camera B, okay, over here. And they both say Nikon on them, right? Okay, cool. They both look the same, right? So they should be both be good, right? Well, this camera costs $2,000, and this camera costs like $500. And there, there's a reason for that. The one that costs $2,000 takes much better pictures. They're going to be sharper. They're going to be clear. They're, they're going to be able to be shot in very dark conditions, like in a church and in, in a reception hall where, you know, 50% of your weddings are shot in the dark, <laughs> in dark places. And you need a camera that can do that. So big example is equipment differences. So I just laid it out in cameras, you know, an introductory person starting off with a you know, inexpensive camera that's a crop camera. It can't work in low light very well. It doesn't have high ISO capabilities. It's slower to focus. All these things, 
here's a more expensive camera, costs three times as much, and you know, it's much better in low light, much able to focus better in low lighting, beautiful pictures, full frame camera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, a beginning person also has probably got one camera because they cost a lot of money. You know, it starts off, you know, $500, you got to buy a lens, a lot of money. So they come to your wedding with one camera. What happens if it fails? Guess what? You get no pictures. Okay. And I hear that a lot. I hear so much. Our photographer messed up, our photographer flaked, our, our, he lost our pictures, these things happen. So you go to a reputable photographer or experienced photographer, and guess what they take to a wedding? One camera? No. They take two cameras, probably, maybe even three cameras. I take three cameras to a wedding because your wedding is important and if a camera goes down because when you do a lot of weddings you experience these things okay so you know a, a good wedding photographer is going to take probably a minimum of two cameras to a wedding so we're talking about the quality of the equipment number one now we're talking about quantity of the equipment see so a, a good photographer is going to have backup someone that's experienced is going to have backup of everything because a, a lens can fall it can break i hear how you know how many lens stories of broken lenses drop lenses things like that so experienced photographer reputable long time in business has a lot more gear a lot more equipment that's why they charge more money because this stuff is expensive people would, would never believe how much it costs in camera gear and when you're shooting a wedding and, and shooting 3,000 photos per wedding, guess what? You fry up cameras, you fry up shutters, equipment, um, you know, goes, it, it breaks and it gets destroyed. So, so there you go. All right, somebody joined us here. I'm not sure who that is, but uh, we will carry on with our discussion here. Hopefully everything's cool. All right, so equipment another thing we talked about is training okay so one photographer may not have very very uh, much training another photographer maybe went to photography school maybe they do continuing education maybe they go to seminars and are consistency le consistently learning you know that's an example of myself i've been you know studying in in schools for five five six years just in wedding photography straight every day i'm studying i'm learning new things so Someone starting off, they're not going to have that experience, okay, and the training. Now, lighting. We talked a little bit about cameras, but lighting is critical in wedding photography, you know, and you see a lot of people say, I'm a natural light photographer. Okay, well, that's cool, you know, but the problem with weddings is 50 to sometimes 70% of your wedding is shot indoors, okay, be it a hotel room be it a house, going into a church, going into a dark reception room. So you have to use artificial lighting often to light different aspects of a wedding, especially a reception. You know, where you have sometimes four walls all closed and dark. There's no natural light available at all. So lighting is critical in photography. And lighting is like comparing apples to cereal boxes. There's so many different ways to light um, a wedding. You know, most people think of a flash. So most people just take a camera like this and they put a flash on it like this and they go, guess what? I'm a wedding photographer <laughs> because I have a flash, okay? Let me stick it in your face <laughs> and push the button, okay? And watch your eyes go and turn colors, okay? So, you know, this is what most people think of as equipment to shoot a wedding. Now, this is called on-camera flash, which is not very flattering to you because it just goes straight in front of you. It makes everything flat. Uh, there's no... Uh, breaking the background from the subject. There's no creating shadows and things like that. But this is how a lot of photographers shoot a whole wedding, you know, even if they are experienced, you know. Um, <clears throat> now, comparing that to what you see behind me, see, so what you see behind me are light modifiers, see, so if I stick this in your face, it's vamo, you know, it's going to be very bright. But in the back, I have different kinds of modifiers that will soften the light and make it look really nice and real pretty for you and not just be, you know, it's going to spread it out very, very nice. And also the 
lighting you see is not on the camera. See, so it's off at an angle and it's directional now. So it creates dimension and depth and it makes beautiful flattering light. And that's what you want for your wedding is beautiful flattering light. You want to look your best. So I don't want to get too techy techy. But the point is that a person that's new to weddings has done one wedding or so. You'll be lucky if they show up with something like this. But are they going to have modifiers? Are they going to use off-camera flash? Are they going to use like a strobe on this end, you know, for very bright lighting outside? The answer is no, because it's expensive to buy all this stuff. And it takes a lot of training to understand how to use it, the triggers, and all the principles of off-camera flash. It's very compli complex. So the person beginning in photography is not going to use this kind of equipment. So you're going to get totally different results over one or the other. The other thing is, you know, getting back to an introductory or beginning photographer or a friend, guess what they're going to bring? One camera with a flash, okay? What happens if this breaks? you you know you're in trouble you're in trouble you're not going to get good photos i mean generally bring five flashes to a wedding five to six flashes and strobes okay that's the amount of gear i bring to a wedding because once again flashes go down things break and also when you have multiple flashes now you can start to light up reception halls and you can start to make everything look really lit beautifully you're not just putting a flash in someone's face and having this white thing and then everything else is black. So you can start balancing ambient light at the same time your subject and creating beautiful, beautiful photos. Okay, so big difference in lighting. Service, that's another thing. What photographer A is going to give you can be totally different than photographer B as far as your wedding day, how many photos they're going to shoot, all those things. So the service is going to be totally different between one photographer and another. The most important thing is wedding day. You know, when someone says, I've shot one wedding, they haven't really experienced a wedding, okay? Now, I've been doing photography for over 10 years now. I went to photography school, and I've done every, you know, pretty much every kind of form of photography out there. And guess what? For me, is the hardest form of photography. It's weddings, okay? Weddings, I tell people, is the hardest form of of photography all right so do you want someone new doing the hardest form of photography no you know I mean because weddings you have inside you have outside you have light you have dark you have mirrors you have glass you have everything moving like so fast you have long distance short distance people moving down the aisles dancing the whole gamut I mean weddings will throw like everything at you and test your skills like nothing else so as a wedding photographer, you need to know all these things. You need to be able to jump into a room and know how to light it and what equipment to use and what techniques and all the settings on your camera. It's really complicated. People don't know. It's not like you just put a camera and go shoot. It's really complicated um, to get good work. So that's something that you want to really think about is that. The other thing with weddings is that as a wedding photographer, you need to always be prepared for what's coming up. Because if you're not prepared for what's coming up, it's often too late. You know, as an example of coming down the aisle, you know, you have a bride coming down the aisle and you want to get the, the, ex the expression of the bride coming down the aisle. Then you have to turn around and you have to get a picture of the groom as he's looking at the bride and the bride goes in front of you. And then he, they go to the altar and the first thing he's going to, the bride's going to do is uh, her father's going to give her a kiss and send her off right there. So you have to know all these things and you have to be ready for them because you have like split seconds to get all these shots. So once again, if you do a lot of weddings, you know the flow, you know what's gonna come next, you know how to orchestrate things, you know when to step in, you know when to step back. Where somebody beginning, they're not gonna know these things. A friend is not gonna know these things. So once again, really, really important as far as the wedding day itself. Now, the next thing is editing of photos. It's one thing to take a photo, and that's you know a whole thing in itself. The other thing is editing a photo. So you can have photo A and, and, and photo B, the same photo, and I'm going to do a, a video on this in the future, but they could look totally different because of editing and the process of editing. 
And, you know, sometimes people say, well, I'm just going to, you know, just give you the, the photos on a, a stick. I'll just give you raw photos or something like that. But images don't look very nice if they're not edited, if they're not touched up, if things aren't removed, if colors aren't balanced and white balanced and things like that. Like even in this room, you can see it's kind of an orange cast to it because of the lighting. Well, if you don't edit your photos, they're all going to be kind of orange and you don't want them to be orange. So, you know, you want someone that's going to edit all your photos and make them nice. A beginner person generally doesn't have the skill to edit because it takes years. You know, I was a professional editor uh, for a wedding company for three years. All I did was edit weddings, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of weddings and engagement shoots. So, you know, as you do it more, you get better at it. And so there's no comparing a new person editing your photos to somebody that is, you know, has been doing it for years. <laughs> The other thing is is post production. So it's one thing to take photos and okay, give you some photos. You know that's one thing. But let's say you, you want a you know a way to preserve the beauty of your your photos through a wedding album. Okay, I got to get my <laughs> angles right here. They're they're opposite. Okay, there we go. So here's an example of a wedding album. Okay, beautiful beautiful wedding album with a cover on it. Really really gorgeous. So if someone's starting off as a, a photographer, they probably are not hooked up with how to make albums. I mean, I have special software that I can make and create albums with. You know, I have companies that I work with, so there's this whole knowledge and, and history and you know training of okay, you know, I've had to I've had to go to, to to wedding school on how to make albums. Believe it or not, I've learned and taken courses on album design. You know, it's not just putting pictures in a book. It's very you know complicated. Is what grouping you use and which directions the people are looking in and and all these things so if somebody is just starting off or a friend I mean you can get photos but then you know you say you want an album or you want a canvas or things down the line it's much better to work with a company that can do this for you and know know what they're doing okay very good um, so <clears throat> Somebody starting off also, you don't know about their worth ethic, you don't know about the reviews. You know, so somebody that's established in photography, you can number two, you can look at their work. Say so you can look at their work on a website, you can look at their portfolio and go, cool, you know, it's consistent. I like the work, it looks really great. Um, and also you can read reviews and say, okay, cool, people like this guy, or they're like, oh no, you know, people say stay away. He doesn't go get good work. When you're working with somebody new, they don't have that that trail, you know, they don't have that trail of reviews to document or you know note what they're doing, and they also don't have the um, the um, um, portfolio and website that you can look at and say, okay, cool, you know, I can see this work. Um, also things like insurance, you know, legitimate businesses, good photography businesses will have insurance, you know, to cover things in case of accidents. Someone starting off generally, they're not going to pay insurance. And if they're charging $600 for a wedding, <laughs> they're not going to have enough money to buy gear or to pay for insurance. You can't run a business at that amount. You know, maybe you can do a wedding here or two in the beginning or start off, but you know, it doesn't set you up. If, you know, something happens, you lose the images, whatever, something goes wrong on a wedding day, you know, uh, someone that's starting off is not going to be able to kind of help with that as much as somebody that has insurance and is doing a legitimate business, etc. Okay. Um, there's other aspects as well. I mean, shooting a wedding is, is one thing, um, but the success of a wedding has to do, part of it is with planning of the wedding. Uh, there are many companies where it's just like, okay, we just show up and shoot, you know, okay, that's great. But what happens if you didn't really, you didn't know about daylight savings time <laughs> when you booked your wedding in November and it turns out that, you know, your portraits are in the dark. Okay, so the experienced photographer will work with you from the beginning, will look at your timeline and say, hey, we're going to be in the dark here. We need to do our portraits before the ceremony. See, so somebody that knows what they're doing as a photographer and has, you know, 100 weddings under their belt or something like that, 200 weddings, they know these things and they're going to be able to work with you from the beginning to help you and say, okay, we have a problem or we don't have enough time to go from the church to the reception hall. So they can look out for you and help you plan because if you don't plan the wedding outright, 
it's not going to go well. You know, it's it's you're going to have problems. And if someone that's done one wedding, chances are they're just going to show up and shoot, and they're not going to be looking out for these things. They're not going to pre-plan with you to make sure that everything goes well. So that are those are some of the points kind of behind the scene that separates you know photographer a the apple from photographer b the cereal box um and i just really want to give the couples a behind the scene look at what's involved in photography because you don't know that i understand everyone's trying to do the best they can but they don't know behind the scene what goes on as a photographer so i hope this video will enlighten you a little bit as to the differences between say a friend shooting your wedding and an experienced photographer shooting your wedding or someone just starting off in the the realm of wedding photography versus someone that's that's made it their life and you know their passion and and you know made it uh, you know 10 15 years of their life so thank you so much for tuning in i hope you found this video helpful i wish you all the best in your wedding planning the big thing is you got one shot at your wedding and your wedding photos will be the thing that you will remember and help preserve the memories of the wedding of your wedding the most. So once again, you got one shot, you got to get it right. And there are no redos when it comes to your wedding. So thank you and have a beautiful day.